This is It Was a Thing on TV. It's a Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the dregs of humanity. Episode 273, Submission 051. Here's Boomer. Here's Boomer aired on NBC from March 14th of 1980 to August 14th of 1982 for 20 episodes. Like magic, he appears, a hero to save the day. And just when you think he's here for good, that's when he goes away. Hey guys, as I mentioned last week, previewing this week, we're going to talk about Here's Boomer, and Here's Boomer came on the scene because of another dog, not on TV, but in the movies, one that was very popular throughout the late 70s and early 80s named Benji. Everybody remembers Benji from back in that day. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the thing that made Joe Camp money or something. It was basically Joe Camp's meal ticket. Yeah, and Benji, he got into adventures. I mean, I don't know how many Benji movies there were. There were a ton of Benji movies. I can answer that. I can answer that question. There okay. was ben, there was Benji in 1974. Humps, he made a cameo in that in 1976. For the Love of Benji in 1977, a cameo in The Double MacGuffin. Oh, Heavenly Dog in 1980. Oh, yes, that's the one with Chevy Chase where he gets reincarnated as Benji. Mm -hmm. Oh, Heavenly Dog. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Then there was Benji the Hunted in 1987. Then Benji Off the Leash in 2004. And then there was the 2018 reboot film for Blumhouse. Benji. Wait! Blumhouse made a Benji movie? It... It was for Netflix. Is it a horror movie? I don't know. Check, because, you know, remember Blumhouse made that horror fantasy island movie a couple years ago? I know Blumhouse made a number of horror things. I almost said a number of horrible things, but... Oh, that Blumhouse fantasy island movie is horrible. I saw, like, five minutes of it on cable, like, a, a week or two ago. Oh, it was awful. That's another story. Actually, I'll tell it to you right now. It was released in March 16th of 2018 by Netflix. It got 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. It got 53 on Metacritic. It didn't suck. End of story. Okay, so it's not a horror movie. No. Okay, well, that's good. I really did not want to see Benji with freebies, so... <laughs> Imagine Stuart saves his family, but with a dog. So wait, Benji's Al Franken? No, Al Franken is Benji. But yeah, and it basically involved the entire camp family at this point. Okay, you guys are confusing me. First and foremost, I thought there were a lot more Benji movies than that, because I seem to remember going to like two or three of them in a movie theater back in the 80s with the, uh, the family. Benji the Hunted may be one of those movies that we saw because my sister would have been like six or seven at the time and I would have probably grown out of it by that time. I would have been like 12. But I thought there were more theatrical releases like in the early 80s. Okay. Yep. It actually started 1974 as, and now I'm quoting, a delightfully unique motion picture of love and suspense that could easily become a classic. They're not wrong, you know. Well, the thing is, if you ask any kid nowadays who's Benji, they wouldn't know. 
if they were born in the 80s or 70s, maybe even the early 90s, they might have an idea. So it is a bit of a timely reference. But anywho, here's Boomer. You can see some similarities between Boomer and Benji. Well, first off, both dogs are just absolutely adorable. Second, Boomer, I can't tell what breed Boomer is, so I wonder if Boomer is essentially a mutt, which is what Benji was. Yeah, in fact, Boomer, and I have it right here from our friends at IMDb, in all of the episodes was played by a four-year-old mixed breed dog named Johnny. So yes, Boomer was a mutt. Just like Benji, okay. This is your fun fact of the day. Johnny was a rescue. Oh. Not beginning to wish we didn't talk about that ninja show back in November. (laughs) Oh, the master. (laughs) We could have been talking. We could have been talking more about Boomer. We could have been talking more about Boomer instead of Timothy Van Patten. Well, you know who to blame. You blame our listeners because they could have voted for Boomer. It's your fault. If you hear this, it's your fault. (laughs) All oh. three people who voted for the master. This is your fault. Yeah, we could have been talking about Boomer a whole lot earlier, but no. You wanted to hear us talk about Timothy Van Patten and Claude Akins and Demi Moore. And, and Joe Kasugi. And Crystal Bernard. Even though, you know what? Crystal Bernard was oh, on no. wings. Oh, and no. Guys. <laughs> Let me guess. I'm going to take a wild-ass guess here. Do you love the Tortellis? The yes. Tortellis? <laughs> yes, I do love the Tortellis. But you know what I love more than the Tortellis? Wings. <laughs> and you know why? Because it wasn't the Tortellis? <laughs> yes. But more importantly... It made Tony Shalhoub's career. Would, would have never guessed. I am shocked. I am not TV, who played him? Uh, TV, who played him? 800. Abe Weissman and Adrian Monk. Ryan. Who's Tony Shalhoub? Correct. So Boomer did have a movie before this series came about. We actually talked about it, I believe, last week. When we talk, or, or maybe it was two weeks ago, when we talked about a Christmas for Boomer, because remember, Greg made the joke about is this about a Christmas for Boomer Esiason? Yeah, I remember that. We made mention of this movie because of Sheree North, who was in "I'm a Big Girl Now." Oh no, not "I'm a Big Girl Now." Oh no, you're the one. You're the one who brought it up. Just saying. No, I'm not. I, I refuse to take any. Any blame for that show. Hey, I'll take blame for Turnabout, but no, you're not dragging me under the bus for I'm a Big Girl now. But yeah, it's like A Christmas for Boomer in 1979 with Lorison Driscoll, Margie Impert, a young Jonathan Ward, Jillian Grant, Larry Linville, Joyce Van Patten, Shree North, Al Morlinaro, Marty Gold, Jane Greer, with Harriet Nelson as Grandmother Sinclair, and Johnny the Dog as Boomer. Wow! We have Jonathan Ward, who we mentioned in previous entry, The New Adventures of Beans Baxter, and played the big brother to the kid in the wheelchair in Mac and Me! Oh, Oh, no. No! No! Play it! (laughs) Paul Rudd's favorite. But hey, Joyce Van Patten was in this, and we, of course, we mentioned Timothy earlier. Yes. Good. All we need to do now is mention Vince. (laughs) And Harriet Nelson. Oh, my God. You don't know who Harriet Nelson is. Yeah, we talked about her in the High School USA 84 pilot. Yes, we did. 
I didn't even remember that, but thanks for reminding me. Okay, so that movie, which featured a sack maid and a butler kidnapping a pampered dog and asking for $20,000 from the rich owner and the dog that comes to that particular dog's rescue and becomes a member of the family who originally found him. Oh my god! Anyway, that served as the two-hour pilot. The folks at NBC loved it, and they ordered a TV series based upon all of this. And the TV series is basically, here's Boomer. It's Boomer going around the country. Yeah, that's essentially it, is Boomer, like, visiting America. Boomer does America. Boomer wags his tail across this great country of ours and helps people in need, which would have been a common trope back then. It was basically an anthology series, but with a dog. Yeah. And really, the only commonality between all the episodes, there's no regular people, no regular cast members. It's Boomer. There are some people who appeared on two episodes, but again, Boomer's the only one who appeared on even more than two. He obviously appeared on all 20. So yeah, it's really like an anthology series, not your normal drama series, let's say. And with that out of the way, we're going to talk about the episodes, all 20 of them. And again, as I mentioned, this is over a two-year span. Season one was 10 episodes. Season two is 10 episodes. So this wasn't like a normal 26 or 24 episode order. This is 10 weeks at a time. So obviously, it sounds like they actually went on location, possibly. If you're doing Boomer Across America, it sounds like they took the uh, show off the soundstage or maybe the soundstage was made to look like different parts of America. Maybe. But, yeah, uh, but yeah, like the first season, I think didn't end until the absolute end of 1980. And if I take a look really fast, December 7th is when episode 10 aired. Well, admittedly, episode nine aired May 23rd. So this may be like a, I mean, it's not really a Christmas special. I see what the plot line is for episode 10, but still the ninth episode was May 23rd. And then the 10th episode was December 7th of 1980. And then you had to wait until October of 1981 for season two to start. That's weird. You had to wait almost a year and a half for season two to start. Well, minus that episode 10 that, that's just really weird sounding to me but maybe we'll find out some answers as we get into the uh series and obviously we'll start with episode one which is called molly boomer meets a misunderstood young girl named molly and helps her parents find the reason for her withdrawal from others he almost sounds like the original support animal and who's not- to say he's not you're not wrong there Anyway, playing the role of Molly is Natasha Ryan. I believe we talked about her before. No, we did not talk about her before, but she has played in 16 episodes of Ladies' Man as Amy Thackeray, and uh, not that Ladies' Man or the other Ladies' Man, but the one from 1980. I think he... Did we mention this before? Yeah, we We mentioned it a few weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, not the one with Alfred Merlina, no. No, that would be the good ladies, man. The Go one that has him. Betty White in it. True story. Betty White was in the Alfred Molina ladies, man. Alfred Molina and Betty White. How could you possibly go wrong? We should have used that for Marvel Month now that I think about it. Mm. Oh, well. Oh, well. And she also played the title character as a child in the 1976 miniseries, Sybil. Oh, no. Not the Civil Shepherd sitcom. No, 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 that, that, not that one, no. No, because as we all know, Sybil... <laughs> Hold on. Oh, God. Now this is going to be... What so... the hell did I just open? Hold on. Hold on. Did I ever say that the... Sh- <laughs> 
<laughs> Did I ever tell you that the show Civil made Alicia Witt's career? Greg, get yourself together. We're trying to talk about a cute dog. I love Alicia Witt, though. Everybody loves Alicia Witt. Anyway, another name in this episode is D. Wallace, a.k.a. D. Wallace Stone, a.k.a. Mary from E.T. Yeah, the mom from E.T. Yeah, and uh, ironically enough, she was in another dog-related feature, Cujo. Oh, God! We're just not going to talk about that. Okay, cool. No, we're, we're going to talk about good dogs, not evil dogs in this episode. Dang it, yes! And also, I'm going to throw out one more name. In this episode playing Dr. Joyce Clark is a woman named Fran Bennett. The only reason I mention her, Greg, yeah. is because she played Marie Billings on four episodes of Quantum Leap. Oh, wow. That's which is funny. getting rebooted. That's that got right. picked up. Ding, ding, yes, ding, ding, ding. NBC actually picked up the new Quantum Leap. Yes, oh, and it's airing, and it's got a plumb slot outside of the voice. Oh, uh, that's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be epic. I cannot wait. I've been waiting almost 30 years for new Quantum Leap. I cannot wait. I want to see if somebody actually finds what happens to Dr. Beckett. I've always <laughs> contended that at the end of the series, after, like, he fixes Al in, in uh, the timeline in the final scene, like, he goes off and does whatever from that point on. That's how I always interpreted the finale. Yeah, oh. because there is no Dr. Sam Beckett in this reboot. No. For all we know, this is the moment, 2022, where they launch Dr. Beckett into the past. Well, no, because in 99, that's how the series starts, is he's oh. launched in the past. Oh, okay. I totally forgot. what. Because remember, forgot. like, they had episodes, like, in the fifth season, the final season, where, like, they show, like, the future of 1999, and it looks, like, exactly nothing like 1999. It's like 1999 is how people in 1989 would interpret it. 1999 pretty much looked like uh, the new Chicago and Buck Rogers or something. Something like that. One minor correction... In the pilot of Quantum Leap, Sam Beckett gets launched into the past in the year 1995, not 1999. But they do show the world of 1999 in the final season of Quantum Leap in one of the episodes, especially that episode where Sam leapt into a murderer. But yeah, that's basically the origin of Boomer's Adventures as we go to his next adventure. Me and my shadow. Oh, right. I want to see you do that with uh, a K in there, Chico. Me and my shadow. I can see you with a cane. Oh, you put can a tux see on me. you and you get oh, all fancy. Oh, oh, yeah, man. I'd be fancy. Okay, let me read, okay. let me read this. An ex vaudevillian is reluctant when Boomer attempts to reunite him with his successful former partner and playing the ex-Vaude villain, Tom! Tom Bosley! Potential Hall of Famer, maybe? Oh, he's already in. Don't even, don't even question it. Should we just declare him a Hall of Famer now, not even bother with the induction ceremony? Let's just declare him a Hall of Famer right then and there. No, let, let's well, make it formal next year. But yes. I do have another person in this episode that's a big name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Playing Lou in this episode, Barney Martin. Yes, Jerry's dad from Seinfeld. Exactly, yep. yes. So two really big names in that episode. Indeed. Going on to episode three, it's called Jailbreak. After escaping... Three men who are capturing stray dogs for use in experimental work. Boomer helps a boy whose dog is stolen to release the other captured strays. Oh, can you oh. believe who's playing the dog napper in this episode, Mike? This is a great, oh my gosh, this is great casting. This is great mm. casting here. Yep. Go for it. Here we go. Margaret Hamilton. That's great. That is absolutely AKA perfect. the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> but we did 
mention her. How beautiful Ch- is that? Yeah, we did mention me and Chico that she was in the uh, Paul Lynn Halloween special. Yes, that she was. was. Yes. And playing the boy in this episode, the boy by the name of Jesse, is Matthew Laberto. Of course, you would know him from, let's see, he was in Wiz Kids. And nowadays, he can be heard on the Yu-Gi-Oh! meta series, Star Wars The Old Republic, and Pokemon as Rocco. Pokemon! He's in Pokemon! Now, my good man, what do you like to play? Pokemon! Pokemon! Pokemon with the pokey and the man in the thing where the guy comes out of the thing and he likes to fall off his arm. Oh, oh, jeez. What the hell just happened? I have no freaking clue. <laughs> That's a reference to The Simpsons. Okay, well, I, I may. And, and, may- and, and, and Mike, are you ready for this, Mike? Yeah. He was on a week of hot potato in 1984. He was on hot potato. Oh he my was gosh. on hot potato. No, hot potato with Bill Cullen. It's me, Johnny Olson. Hey guys, what are you oh talking my god. about? Oh my god, it's the ghost of Johnny Olson. Johnny, we're talking about a show about a dog called Here's Boomer. Oh, you're talking about a show called Here's Boomer. Oh, what a lovable dog. Well, Shani, I need you to get out of my house now before we haunt this house for... Okay, Greg, I'll see you later. <laughs> why why oh did Johnny Olsen sound like the vibration of the kid in Carlisle? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, God. oh, geez. Greg, you need a Ghostbuster in your house. You've got some ghouls there. Yeah, and man. You need, you need, you need some demons excise or something. Oh my gosh. Episode uh, four. I misread the title for episode four. I'll just say this is going to get cut out. I, I, I misread it as the Virgil. No, like, no you keep <laughs> that in. Red sticks. Red sticks and meat sauce. This would have been more entertaining if Virgil appeared on this show. Okay, hey, so it's not called the wants, Virgil. Hey, y'all want some bread sticks? <laughs> Okay, it's not called the Virgil, it's called the Vigil. Though I think the Virgil might be a lot more fun. Oh my gosh. Try, him and Boomer trying to get that F money. <laughs> Signing autographs at different card shows every weekend. Okay. After an old man dies, Boomer befriends his dog and finds a way to help him stop brooding over his master's grave. With the assistance of a third dog. Oh. Big name, though. Really big name. Playing Dr. Chelsea Haggard in this episode, Ken Kerchival. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cliff Barnes. Cliff yep. Barnes. From Dallas, yeah. That's all mm-hmm. you need to say, yeah. Another big name, not as big as Ken Kerchival, but definitely known, is uh, Vanula Flanagan. Vanula Flanagan from brotherhood on showtime and to have and to hold and also oh wow she was in the the, uh short-lived tv version of how the west was won episode five is called tell them boomer sent you an advertising agency chooses boomer for a dog food commercial but he runs away a chase by security guards proves fruitless we got big 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 names in this episode. There's not a small name among them. I mean, I'm looking at the cast right here. We've got in the role of Liz Wiggins, we got Doris Roberts We're talking about Ray's mom on Everybody Loves Raymond. And many other things. Oh my gosh, too many to count. Yes, uh, play the role of Jackie Foreman, Michael J. Fox, Alfie yeah. Keaton. Yeah. Mike on Spin City. Morty freaking McFly. I'm playing the role of Vance Dalton, William Bogert, Brandon freaking Brindle from Small Wonder People. Oh, yes. 
But oh, there's one more name that you neglected to mention, Chico. Playing Sergeant Mooney, Jerry Hauser. We literally just talked about this guy. Yeah, talk, on the talk. on the monsters today, we just talked about him. Yeah, I mean, this would have been what, uh, what, a year removed from playing Mister Marsha freaking Brady. Well, Come a on. year, a year before, because this year is before, eight. yes. He's one year away from marrying Marie McCormick, getting some of that. Hey, I gotta say, you know what? If you know, I'm a year away from getting Marie McCormick. Yeah, I'd be pretty stoked too. You wouldn't be as happy as Chico because he sounded like he had a little bit of Eddie Mecca in there. Hey, I'm getting some McCormick. Yeah, oh. let's go get some pizza. I don't know any good L.A. pizza joints. I'm sorry. Then there's John Riley, who from 1990s to the end of his life was basically a fixture on your stories. He was in Sunset Beach. He was in Passions, General Hospital, General Hospital Night Shift, The Bay. Nobody watches The Bay. Anyway, he was also on nine episodes of Arliss. And then he was on three episodes of Mortal Kombat Conquest and on through the 1994 run of Iron Man, the animated series. He played Clint Barton. Hawkeye. Hawkeye. So yeah, not a small name in this cast, this episode. Oh, wait till we get to the next episode. A lot of people. And we're going to get into it right now. It's titled Overboard. I assume I wait- Kurt. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for a Greg joke about okay. the movie. I assume Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn will be nowhere near this episode. They are not involved in any way. Oh, uh, and sadly, neither is Ray Combs. Because remember, Ray Combs wasn't overboard. That's right. Ray Combs wasn't overboard. No, we don't have any celebrities as big as those folks, but they're pretty big. Oh, yeah. Boomer meets a family on a camping vacation. After a boating accident with three children involved, he goes for help and assists in their location and rescue from a bear encounter. Boomer against a bear? Why do I picture that like the scene near the end of Anchorman where Baxter was encountering the bear? (laughs) Remember that scene near the end of Anchorman? Yeah, at the zoo. Yeah, of course. All right, so, uh, oh, God, let's talk about some of the big names on this. Playing the three kids, because the three kids were Ronald, Brian, and Lori. They're all played by Scott Bayo, Moosey Dreyer, and Tracy Gold. Bing, bang, boom, star power, people. Well, I think uh, well, Moosey Dreyer is not a Bang. He's more of a one of those. Oh, Put your thumb in your mouth and make a little pop. Not as big as Tracy Gold or Scott Bale. Yeah. Tracy Gold, I don't think, was that big at the time, but she became big later, obviously. Yeah, growing yeah absolutely. But even more names. Playing the sheriff in this uh, episode is mm-hmm. Rance Howard. He's Ron Howard and Clint Howard's daddy. Wow! Yep. And another big name here, or big ish, playing Dan in this episode is Charlie Siebert. We oh, talked yeah. about him a lot of times. Oh, he's been on plenty of things. He's absolutely. A, future It was a thing Hall of Famer, Charlie Siebert. Oh, and he just died recently. He oh, died, no. He, 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 it says here on his IMDb, he died May 1st. I didn't know about that. Oh, I didn't know that either. Oh, well, then we're going to honor him in the year in review. I'll tell you that much. Oh, oh yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I didn't read the obits every day and I did not see his name. That's horrible. And then a big name to somebody you've probably never seen before. Play the role of E.M. Jarvis. Frank Walker. This was before he became Frank Megatron Walker. Oh yeah, before he became known as the big voice guy. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, it's time for another neato fact of the day. Oh, what is it? Okay. All right. So in Overboard, one day 
they're filming at the Duck Pond at Playa del Rey, and the director asks the trainer if the dog could ride a skateboard, and the trainer said, not yet, but I could teach him. And then after lunch, he was riding the skateboard across the basketball court. Wow. Oh, that's impressive. So yeah, give somebody lunch. They can teach a dog how to ride a skateboard. That takes us to episode seven called George and Emma. Boomer helps a woman who's being evicted from her apartment after 37 years. Oh. Why do all of Boomer's epic adventures have to be so sad? I wish I had an answer. Henry Jones is in this episode. We talked about him a couple weeks ago when we talked about I Married Dora. Oh! And remember, marriages of convenience are, at the time of that show, and still are, at the time we're doing this show, quite illegal. Hey, I got one even better on uh, Henry Jones. We talked about him last week. We did? He was in the episode Penny's Old Boyfriend, Unturnabout. Oh! Oh, oh no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But also, hey, Greg, do you want me to put more salt in that wound? Well, let me guess. Was he on sweepstakes? No, he was on New Love American Style. Oh, good. The New Love American Style. And and you're not going to believe just how coincidental this is. You won't believe the character name he played on Love American Style. What was his name? I hope, I hope you're sitting. I hope you're sitting because yeah, this is a callback to 10 minutes ago at most. What is it? Virgil. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Did I say oh, boy? Because. Like Sam oh Beckett? Boy. Yes, you did. All right. I think you need to emphasize that a little more. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, we're going to go to episode eight on that note. And episode eight is titled Private Eye. He's watching you. (laughs) He's watching your your every every move. move. A Green Horden detective helps Boomer investigate when a valuable wedding gift disappears just before the ceremony. And playing that detective, Ron Silver. Yes, that Ron Silver. Everyone will remember him as the bad guy in Time Cop. Mm hmm. And he was on the Chain Reaction 1980 finale. Because remember, Mike, he was with Betty White in the bonus game where Betty White gave the clue about Hitler. The Sickle oh. Groover. The Sickle yeah. Groover. Yes. Uh, Who was the Sickle Groover? And. Oh, pass. Go on. Oh my gosh. Well, there's other names too. Oh my gosh. Playing Thel in this episode, I'm not even going to say what she's been on because if you don't know, it's not my fault. Mm-hmm. Ruba Clanahan. And if you don't know who Ruba Clanahan is, just go away. Go watch go- Maud. Go watch Golden Girls. That's all you need to do. Go watch Starship Troopers. Wait, she's in Starship Troopers? Rue McClanahan is in Starship Troopers. Wow. NPH and Rue McClanahan and Denise Richards all in one movie. Crazy. Oh, but Greg, this one I know you're going to love. We talked about him last week. Okay. Playing Philip in this episode. All right. Jonathan Freaks. Hold on. Hold on. Do you mean to tell me Jonathan Freaks was in this episode of Here's Boomer? You were right. And we got one more name that we've actually talked about. Playing a burglar in this episode is Branscombe Richmond. The place I remember us talking about him, I don't remember what episode, but we were talking about Renegade. Do you, uh, you remember Renegade back in the With 90s? Lorenzo Lamas. I remember, I remember yeah. Renegade. On yeah, USA. He, yeah, he played Bobby Four Killer, then Bobby Six Killer. <laughs> <laughs> He upgraded to two kills. He killed two people in the 110 episodes. Well, no, he killed six. He killed two more over the course of 110 episodes. 
<laughs> That's really not that much, though. Two over 110 episodes. Bill Hader has buried kills like that in one episode. Yeah, but you can't really change his name every episode. You can't have him Bobby Four Killer one episode, Bobby Six Killer um, a couple episodes later, and then Bobby 284 Killer, <laughs> like at the end of the series. You can't do that. I would be shocked if we didn't talk about him again. Oh, we're going to, because he he was on an episode of 18 Wheels of Justice. Oh, boy. Yep. There yes. you go. There you go. Someone needs to loan us, or someone needs to upload all the episodes of 18 Wheels of Justice in English so we can finally cover this. Because the DVDs are from Canada, and dear Lord, I'm not going to pay however much it is to get these episodes shipped. Okay, I found out... I think what we talked about him on previously misfits of science oh okay there you go which makes a lot of sense now that i see that all right episode nine all these names this is amazing episode nine is called the jockey don't tell me boomer goes after somebody's pair of underwear okay a young boy whose father was a jockey wants to be one so he spends a lot of time at the farm where his father worked but the trainer who has something against his father makes things difficult for him. When the owner gets a new horse, it seems that the owner and the current jockey are the only two who can ride him. When the jockey gets injured, he's asked to fill in, but the trainer tries to sabotage him. Again, huge name in this episode, especially for this era, early 80s. Playing that kid, presumably, Todd Bridges. Oh, yes. yes. He may have been on a little show you might have heard of called Different Strokes. Yeah, he would have been on the network at that time. Yeah, and he was in, uh, I believe he was in the latest uh, installment of Celebrity Big Brother, if I'm not mistaken. He was in a installment of Celebrity Big Brother. And also, Greg, he's featured in the first Americana series, I believe. If yes. not the first, the second. Yes, he is. Because I have an autograph card of him that I pulled from that series. Okay. Final episode. Now, remember, we, I mentioned earlier, episode nine aired in May of 1980. Episode 10, the official end of season one. This episode aired December 7th of 1980. So we have well over six months between new episodes here. This is called Boomer and Miss 21st Century. Boomer ends up at a hotel where a beauty contest is going on. He befriends a girl whose sister is one of the contestants. They think they saw one of the judges abduct and try to tell. Problem is the girl has a history of telling whoppers. And when the man turns up, they decide to forget about it. So she and Boomer try to find out what's going on. Yep, the two sisters are played by a couple of names. Um, Pam Arnold is played by Catherine Moffat who you would know as Bertie Spencer in the 1998 Mike Hammer Private Eye series, Etna Grinbody on the new WKRP in Cincinnati, and while we're going back to the Marvel Animated Universe, she played Scarlet Witch on Iron Man and a high fashion model on sister show the fantastic four playing her sister is tammy lauren who you would probably know from season one of martial law among yeah, other but, things but we got big 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 names really yes. big names yes. really big names those are just the two principles wait till you see who else is in this episode i think we'll start with milo acres first played by the one and only roddy mcdowell Oh, yeah, Roddy McDowell. Oh, buddy. Oh, hold Play on. Hold oh, on. Oh. Before we get... Roddy McDowell was on an episode of Quantum Leap, Chico. Oh, boy. Now, remember? It was the episode when Sam leapt into Al, because in the timeline that Sam Claus is Al is dead, so Al's not there, and so he's replaced by another guy, and the other guy is played by Roddy McDowell. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was pretty insane. And we got more names. You want me to fire some more names off at you? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Playing a painter in this episode 
This is an old school name, Louis Nye. Louis Nye. Most recently, he's passed away, but he played in some of the early seasons of Curb Your Enthusiasm. He played Jeff Green's dad. Oh, that's awesome. So he's Jeff Garland's dad on Curb Your Enthusiasm. For like the first couple of seasons, yeah. But that's not even the biggest name. Nope. Playing the MC of this beauty contest. Greg, I wish you could say this in your Johnny Olson voice. Gene Rayburn. What are you talking about, Mike? I didn't say that in Johnny. I didn't say anything in Johnny Olson voice. He was right here. You saw him. I- I'm sorry. I-, I-, I didn't have my glasses on. Yeah, Gene Rayburn played the MC of this beauty pageant. Yeah, you know what that means. You're gorgeous. <laughs> That's probably what he said to all the beauty contestants. No, I didn't want to hear that, Greg. No. You're no. gorgeous. That's terrible. That's you terrible. Go to the corner. It's bad. But you know what, Greg? I'll make it up because one more name playing Lester in this episode is Ray Singer. The only reason I mentioned Ray Singer is he played a young doctor in Star Trek for the voyage home. Oh, okay. That's probably the scene where they're trying to save Chekhov in the hospital. But you know what? It wasn't probably as great of an acted scene as this. Starfleet regulations, that's outrageous! <laughs> Take a loser! <laughs> Didn't we hear enough of that last week? Oh my <laughs> gosh, that was great. Oh, okay. I need to compose myself as we start season two now. Now, again... Last episode aired December of 80. The first episode of season two aired October 4th of 1981. So again, big like 10 month gap here, nine month gap. And we're going to start off with Boomer and the Musket Cove treasure. Boomer helps an old seaman look for treasure that is supposedly on an island. So with Boomer leading the way, they try to find it. But what they don't know is that there are a couple of guys on the island trying to thwart them. Rance Howard's on this episode again, playing a character named Foldy. Okay. Foldy. Foldy, yeah. Playing Blades in this episode. We talked about him plenty. Stuart Pankin. Yep, best known from not necessarily the news. And more recently, he does one of those infomercials for, I think, one of those um, inversion therapy tables or whatever it is. Oh, okay. I, I've seen him on like Saturday afternoon infomercials pushing something. I don't care to know what it is, but yeah, that, that's what he's doing nowadays. <laughs> well, I saw Blair Underwood pushing something on an infomercial like last week. I'm like, what the hell is Blair Underwood doing in an infomercial? That's a shocker. Yeah, I know. But you know, it does give us an excuse to play since he was on L.A. Law. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. I really don't want to talk about it. Ah! Oh. oh, my God. Oh, poor Diana Muldor going down that elevator shaft. Damn it, I don't like Pulaski episodes. Episode two, Boomer's East Side Story. East Side? After being chased by the East Side Aces and their Doberman Attila, that's a good name for a Doberman. Joey forms another gang, the Dirty Half Dozen, with their dog, Boomer. When Boomer is captured, the boys negotiate with the Aces. So, playing the role of Joey is Pat Peterson. He plays Michael Fairgate in uh, Knox Landing. You don't know who he is, I can't help you. But hey, returning, playing Turk, Todd Bridges. Oh, Mm -hmm. yes, Todd Bridges is back. Episode three in season two is called The Prince and the Boomer. Boomer goes into a mansion and sees that the owner's dog looks like him. When the dog decides to go, Boomer decides to take his place. The owner tells Boomer, thinking he's her dog, that she made arrangements for him to be with her when she goes. That means when she dies, he'll be put to sleep. He'll be put to sleep. No. no. Su- no. Su- Su- Susan, what do you have to say about this? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I agree, Susan. This is absolutely terrible. Boomer does not have to be in this situation. Why he switched places, I have no idea. 
no, this no, has no, been no, such, no, no, no. This has been such an upbeat show, and suddenly we just hit the brakes on it. Now we're talking about this when this woman dies, Boomer's gonna go with her. This well, hold horrible. on, hold on. I got an explanation as to why that probably is. Because who's playing the woman who owns the dog that now, I see, I see look like well, well, wait, wait, I'm not even done with the capsule. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. So, so finishing this up, that means when she dies, he'll be put to sleep and buried with her. Well, guess what? And she dies not long after that. Oh, no! Oh. That's why we got to finish all these capsules, because we're missing key pieces here. So she's gone, and her lawyer is making the preparations, but two of her employees decide to find a way to stop it. Good! Good! Very good. Greg, who plays the old lady in this episode? Natalie Schaefer. And we just talked about her not that long ago. Love her. Love her. But again, not the only name, because playing Les Andrews in this episode is Barry Nelson. And we talked about him. Oh, yes, because as we all know, the original James Bond in the 1954 episode of Climax with Casino Royale. But we also talked about him in The Ropers. Right. Episode four is called Boomer and the Bucketeers. Boomer meets a young man who is a rising basketball player who is now bitter that he is confined to a wheelchair. Boomer then gets Metal Arc Lemon, who is in town with his team, the Bucketeers, to help him. Because we can't say Carl Globetrotters. We can't say that. We, can, we, we we cannot say Harlem Globetrotters. Probably not. We have to call them the Bucketeers. Uh, okay then. But again, playing himself as Metal Arc Lemon, we've talked about him in the past because he was on season two of Hello Larry. But he would have been a trotter by then. By now, he's not a trotter. By now, he owns a sporting goods store in Portland, Oregon. No, 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 because Hello Larry didn't make it to the 81 82 season. Yeah, it was uh, done by then. Yeah, it was toast. Yeah, my bad. It's okay. But also, we do have another name. Playing Robbie in this episode is Patrick Cassidy. Would that be David and Sean's brother? David Cassidy's half brother. Oh. Sean Cassidy's brother. Okay. So so he's uh they're related. They're familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're familiar. Yeah, son of Shirley Jones and Jack Cassidy. So he is in the Cassidy family, yes. But we did talk about him in not another high school show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. Episode 150. So go back to that. So second appearance of him on the podcast. That was a great episode. Oh, yeah. It was so amazing the Jennifer Lawrence scene in Not Another High School show that Blink or You'll Miss It cameo. Episode 5 is called Make Him Laugh. A pizza delivery boy who wants to be a comedian meets Boomer. He goes to NBC Studios. Oh, look, there's promotion for the network. Uh, How convenient. Yeah. He goes to NBC Studios to audition for The Tonight Show with Boomer's help. Oh my gosh, we got names, we got names, we got names. We got names names upon names. Uh, First of all, Cosmo Valetti, he's played by John Femia. If I'm not mistaken, he was in Hello Larry too. Yes, he was! Yes! He was like the neighbor, I think, in season one. The neighbor kid, yeah. How the hell did Boomer get to Portland? First Meadowark Lemon, now this guy. Why did NBC <laughs> bring people from Hello Larry on a show in 1982 or, or late 1981? No that's the, maybe that's the bigger question. But hey, beyond John Famia, playing Angelo in this episode is Bill Dana. Big name there. Big. Oh, but that, again, not the biggest. Two mm-hmm. biggies coming up. Playing himself, guessing he was maybe like a guest on The Tonight Show. Dick Martin. Oh, oh Dick Morton, yeah. Yeah, not even the biggest name on this episode. Oh, wait, 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 wait. D- don't uh, bury the lead here. We're going to talk about Dick Martin later this year because we're covering mind readers. <laughs> but, but now, not the, biggest the name. The on name. This episode. No, well, th- this is up there. I don't know if it's 
bigger than Dick Martin, but it's, it's it, they're in the same stratosphere. Playing Sophia Valetti, and we talked about this woman last week on uh, the Munsters Today. Kay Ballard. Mm-hmm. Episode six is titled Camityville's Boomer. Boomer and a brother and sister dancing team get trapped in a spooky mansion on a stormy night and are held captive by a creepy Dr. Frankenstein. Oh, please let Dr. Frankenstein be John Shuck. It's not John Shuck. It's Victor Buono. Oh. But, oh, hey, wait, wait, wait. Look who's playing the monster. We talk, You guys talked about him last week because Chico name dropped me saying, oh, I wish Mike was here so we could talk about him. Well, now we could talk about him. Richard Mole. Yes. This just brings me so much joy. Thank you. I, mm-hmm. I got my Richard Mall Phil. Oh, hey, you know what? We talked about Quantum Leap getting a reboot. Night Court got its reboot picked up. Boop, boop. Yeah, More Mole Sarash on TV. I'm all for this. Oh, I'm all over that. I'm buying the reboot. All right, episode seven is titled, oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Should we get just get the, let's get the soundboard up. Looking good. Looks good. Oh, it looks 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 good. Looks good. Boomer meets a blind man whose guide dog recently died. Oh, not another death. Boomer decides to be a substitute. The man wants to pursue his dream of being a cyclist, and his new canine friend helps. Hey, how about more names? As if we haven't had enough names. How about more names? Uh, how about all the names? Just just all the names. Oh, I think all we should names. just do all the names. Doris Roberts is back, playing Maxine in this episode. Playing Willie is Chuck McCann. Nothing? Um, Chuck McCann was the voice of Duckworth in many things related to DuckTales, including the remastered version of the video game, oh, the yeah. movie. Oh, yeah, yeah he's a, a voice guy. We got more names because Dean Butler from The New Kitchen, he is Gary. And as Ginny, we have a very young Rosanna Arquette. Rosanna, Rosanna. Just all the names. Just, yeah, just throw names. out all the that's, names. That, that's oh, what wait I said. No, oh, that's somebody else entirely. I'm sorry. Okay, well, that's fine. Yeah, all the names. Episode 8 is Boomer in the Pound. Oh, no. Boomer is sent to the pound, slated for death for biting someone. Oh! But he he is innocent. Good! While while waiting, Boomer thinks over the events of his life. This sounds like a flashback episode. And actually, it looks like it is because, like, listen to all the names that we've talked about already that are on this episode. We've got... Joyce Van Patten, we've got Ron Silver, we've got Natasha Ryan, we've got Branscombe Richmond, we've got Doris Roberts, we got John Riley, we got Jeanette Nolan, we've got Henry Jones, we got Jerry Hauser, we've got Tom Bosley, we've got Scott Bayo. But there's a new name in this episode playing Phil is Conrad Janice from Mork and Mindy. Yes, uh-huh. Con- Conrad recently, recently uh, passed away. Yeah, he recently yeah, passed, passed, yeah. Yeah, passed away beginning of March. Yeah. Oh, Conrad Janice. One of my all time favorite names, Conrad Janice. But that was mainly because it was used as a joke on Mystery Science Theater 3000 in the Alien from LA episode. Oh, we're dang. not playing the song. We're not playing the song. We're not playing the song. What oh. song? Oh, no. The MST Sandy Virginia. Frank? No, we're not talking no, about Sandy no, Frank. No, I'm not talking about Sandy Frank's song. Here is the scene from the Alien from L.A. episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000 that Greg mentioned. Oh, Daddy, it wasn't the dream. Dream come true. I've become Conrad Janice. Episode 9, Season 2 is Boomer Goes for the Gold. After losing his job, a young man meets Boomer and an astute salesman who shows him how to be successful by training Boomer to compete at a dog show. In this episode, playing Charlie Foster, and again, big name, John Amos. Yeah, John Amos. Yeah, the the oldest looking 39-year-old when he was on Good Times. 
Really? He, I look at him. He does look like he's 39. He's like 59. Hey, we lucky we got him. Good time. <laughs> oh my god. They're singing all the songs tonight. Oh yep. no. Fun fact. That painting recently sold at an auction. I did read that, yes. All right. Let's wrap up this thing. We're going to get to episode 10 of season two. And our final episode is titled Flatfoots. Two lowly regarded police officers are given a chance to prove themselves by being assigned to serve a warrant on a bookie. They can only succeed with Boomer's help. John Riley's in this episode as Officer Jack Shackelford. And really, that's the only name of a note I, I see here. Okay. So that's 20 episodes over two seasons. This is an absolutely adorable series. I have to ask, what happened? Should we play the old game? Let's look at the schedule, Chico. Yeah. All right. What was on? And I'm starting at the premiere now. So this will give us a little sort of a baseline. On that March 14th, 1980 evening, here's Boomer aired on is a Friday at 8 p.m. Perfectly good time slot, if you ask me. Almost like a perfect time slot. After it was Facts of Life. Perfectly good. Mm -hmm. Nine o'clock. Pink Lady and Jeff. Oh! Well, also, let's look at the competition. Uh, That first week, and and I think this is beyond the first week, what's on eight to nine on CBS at this point? Not Dukes of Hazzard. That was on at nine. The Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. So yeah. I think you got a big answer there as to why maybe it failed a little bit there. So that'll probably do it. And it's up against the Incredible Hulk for the foreseeable future. And ultimately, at the end, I want to say at the end of the year, it would be, what was that um, Christmas episode with uh, Boomer in it? Episode. That was the episode. pilot. The Christmas the pilot. Boomer? No, no, I mean the, uh, the one from season one, because it aired in Christmas of Boomer and Miss Twenty First. Oh, Miss Twenty First, yeah, the the, the beauty. So that was so that was December seven. And actually, I've got it airing December seventh at seven p.m. And wait, hold on, December seventh, I believe, would have been a Sunday night. On Which, uh, that, that would make sense. I mean, obviously, Prime Access it wouldn't air. The reason I know it's a Sunday night is because the next night was the death of John Lennon. And as we all know, there was a Monday night football game that night between Miami and New England, and that's when Harold Cursell broke the news. Right. And actually, yeah, that was a Sunday. It was an hour-long episode. And, well, 7 o'clock on Sundays, it was going up against 60 minutes. Ooh, that'll do it. That will definitely do it. But then it came back in 81. October 4th, 1981 would be a Sunday. And presumably it would be on that Sunday night time slot opposite 60 minutes. Yeah, it says 730. So, yeah, that'll pretty much do it. For all the people who didn't want to watch 60 minutes, there was Here's Boomer. But unfortunately, in 1981, a lot of people wanted to watch 60 Minutes. ABC in 1981 at this point wasn't airing anything big at 7 o'clock on Sundays. And another thing to consider is NBC at this point, since it's 1981, would have NFL football. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there'd be a lot of late games that ran over. That is true. Because actually they list Flintstones here for some reason. I don't know if that's some sort of special. This is on October 4th of 1981. But again, like we said, here's Boomer would air at 730. So that definitely didn't help out in the ratings. Because I'm sure after football, everybody's turning the channel. Because, you know, I'm sure there's not a lot of crossover between viewers of football and here's Boomer. I can tell you right now, people, I mean, NBC would preempt here's Boomer. They are not preempting chips. 
Oh no, not, not in 1981, 1982, no. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. And actually that takes us to the bigger picture, the ratings. Do we even want to go over the ratings here? Well, yeah, we got to take a look at the ratings. We got to look at the ratings. Absolutely. So I pulled up a couple weeks of ratings. It's sort of mixed throughout the run of the series. So we're going to get some different viewpoints of, uh, from different uh, time uh, frames. So the first date I'm going to give you guys is from uh, late March of 1980. This is for the week of March 17th to the 23rd. Out of 69 shows, get it out of your system. Nice. It ranked 47th. Hmm. Bottom two thirds, but you know it, it's early. We'll, 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 let's see how it does. But taking a look at the ratings, here's some of the shows it beat: Family at 48, 49 was Sanford. We talked about that previously. White Shadow is 50th. Hawaii Five O. This would have been the last season. That was 54th. Facts of Life, the show that followed Here's Boomer that premiere week, 58th. So Here's Boomer did better than Facts of Life. But then again, it was the first season of the Facts of Life, so it would be like... I know, but still, there's something to build upon there, I think. Then if we look a week later, March 24th to the 30th, out of 66 shows, it finished 58th. That's mm. not good. No, I mean, you could probably get away with it in the first show because it's the first show, but you get that drop off. That's not going to help you. No. The next week I have is April 7th to the 13th. And again, out of 69 shows, 51st. Again, okay. beating Facts of Life, beating two episodes of Hello, Larry. And beating Greg's favorite, The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo. Oh! oh. We miss Sheriff Lobo. I, I miss, miss Sheriff Lobo. All right. I have some second season ratings I'm going to share with you. So let's oh. see if this got better. Okay. 67 episodes. This is for the week, I should add, uh, besides the 67 episodes. October 26th to November 1st of 1981. So this is about a month into season two, 67 shows were rated. Here's Boomer was 60th. Oh, yeah, it's not looking very good. And really, there's no name shows that it beat. Uh, 59th was actually making a living, which is, of course, which the, is it's uh, a living, exactly. A living. Yeah. yeah, it was this title for it, season two of It's a Living, and actually, 58th is 2020. Kind of surprising because 2020 has been on forever, but yeah, it was 58th that week. Yeah, remember we covered the first episode of 2020, which was, let's be honest, a work in progress. It, yeah, it but, was bizarre. Yeah, but when does Barbara Walters join 2020? I don't think she's there yet, right? No, not yet. I think she still has, what, uh, four or five years left until she joins 2020 full time? Yeah, I guess so, because it's just you doing it solo. And it was on Thursday nights, remember? Yeah, it was on Thursday nights for a long time. Okay, now we're going to jump, uh, I think this is a week later, November 2nd to the 8th. 68 shows. It came in 64th. Oh. I think the writing is on the wall at this point. And I'm going to give you one last week. March 1st through the 7th of 1982. Six again, the best number in the world. Sixty nine shows that week. Nice. Guess what it came in at? Sixty ninth. No, not sixty ninth. Sixty sixth. No, not sixty sixth. Sixty eighth. Oh. oh. Beating the Flintstones as I mentioned earlier. Oh. The only thing it beat out that week was the Flintstones. So yeah, I'm sorry. We love you here's Boomer. You're cute. You're adorable. People just weren't watching you. Nobody watched Boomer. But I'll tell you something. Nowadays, anyone can watch Boomer. Oh! Really? 
Yep, because in 2019, CBS Home Entertainment released all 20 episodes on DVD. Oh, good. That's great, because at least when I've done searches on uh, the internet uh, for videos of this, it's always been in German. Well, if here is Bruber can come out on DVD, we can only hope Mr. Smith can come out on DVD. And we'll be the first three people to buy it. Come on, Paramount. Please put it out. Put it on Paramount Plus. We yeah, should start we- a hashtag. Give us Mr. Smith. Roll, no, wrong hashtag. Wrong hashtag. Give us here's Boomer. Yeah, because it is CBS. It would be a Paramount Plus. Yes. Yes, it was. Put here's Boomer on Pluto. Everyone will watch it. The kids will love it. They have so many kids' channels on Pluto, they can put Here's Boomer on there. It'll be a hit with the kids. Oh, God. It's like the tagline writes itself. If you love Benji, you'll absolutely go gaga over Boomer. But today's kids wouldn't know who Benji is. Like I said, that's a 80s, 70s thing. Kids today wouldn't know who Boomer is. But also, I wanted to add beyond the DVDs, Boomer had a lunchbox. Boomer had a lunchbox? Boomer had a lunchbox. We're not going to do eBay prices right on it, but I see a few that have sold on eBay. Uh, One sold for $4. Now, it it, it doesn't say if it came with the thermos or not. I'm guessing there's no thermos for that price. But one that says is brand new went for, well, $16.19, but... It has one of those slashes through the price, so it probably was like a best offer, so it went for less than sixteen nineteen. Uh, but yeah, Boomer see. Boomer had a, a lunchbox, a very bright yellow lunchbox with Boomer on the uh, the front of it. Obviously, I don't remember a Boomer lunchbox being available. That's not one of the options I had when I was getting into first or second grade. Oh. No, I had to get a Pac Man lunchbox. Ah! Boy, how fun is that? You suck, Mike. You know what lunchbox I had? I had a Star Trek The Next Generation lunchbox. Then I had an ALF lunchbox. Then I had a Brave Star lunchbox. My lunchbox is basically stuff that needs to go on the list. Of- no, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> hey, we could do it was a lunchbox. Just throwing that out there. I had a Double Dare lunchbox when I was five. You so. suck, Greg! <laughs> Hey, you know what my lunchbox was after about third grade? What? A bag? A brown paper bag, exactly. (laughs) So you know what? You all in your lunchboxes, I'm jealous of you guys, and I'm not showing my rage. Oh, did I mention my Dick Tracy lunchbox, too? Oh, Dick Tracy. Yeah. Dick Tracy was the rage in 1990. Everyone loved Dickard. I'm sorry. In 1990, I would have been in 10th grade. I would have gotten my butt beaten. You carry a lunchbox, nerd. Well, I wanted to get the double dare one. My friend Greg in 30 years is going to be gaga all over it. Wait, nobody was obsessed with Dicker Tracy at 1990 at your school? Boom. I'm not carrying a lunchbox in 10th grade there, Greg. Of Dick Tracy? Come on. I'm not carrying a Everyone lunchbox. Everyone loved Dick Tracy in 1990. I'm not. I, you know what? I'm no, no, it's, it's just say, not happening. You know what? You want to tell people how to get into Dick Tracy? Just tell Madonna was in it because it's 1990 and Madonna. Need I say more? Yeah. Oh, Madonna was great in Dick Tracy. That was a Tony Shalhoub best performance. Yes, it was. Oh well, God. what can I say about here's Boomer? He was impossibly cute. He was. But you know what Boomer ultimately became? He became a thing on TV. No. But an almost impossibly cute one. He was. He he was cute, but cute doesn't translate into people watching the show. No. No. But you can catch all of the dogs we cover on this podcast that it was a thing on TV.com. Of course, we have all of our links to our socials 
all the links to our previous entries, our links to our good friends at Place to Be Nation. Which yeah, because we're airing we're, Shekapalooza. We got Shekapalooza all, all next week on the Wednesday drop. Yeah, you can relive uh, the horrors that me and Mike had with Turnabout. Hey, oh. I will say, though, the monsters today, you didn't think we could cover 74 episodes, Mike? We covered 74 episodes. And let me tell and- you, Grandpa, he has to Stop crack- making devices. Stop building stuff. They Stop suck. building stuff. They, they all suck, suck Grandpa. You, you are a crap inventor, Grandpa. You are the worst, okay? You are literally the worst. Steve Urkel was a better inventor than you. Damn, son! But it's true. He invented a device that could travel through time and could change DNA. He was a yeah. more impressive inventor than Grandpa. Yeah, you know what Grandpa invented? A bed. And you know what happens in that bed? They slept for 22 years. Yes. Okay, getting back to what you were saying, I was thoroughly impressed that you guys got through 73, 74 episodes in such a short period of time. I got to give you props there. Hey, we're professionals, Mike. A professional. Okay, so next time, uh, what are we talking about next time? We're next talking, time, we're talking about the Noid. Yes. Mmm. Pizza. 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 What are we gonna do tonight? I can't say pizza. 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 Or Chinese. Pizza. 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 Okay, this is getting crazy. Uh, anyway, this will all make sense next time, right here on It Was a Thing on TV. Thanks for listening. Please be kind to each other, and we will see you for the next one. Row! Now, Jeff, it's time to introduce a very talented guest. He's so cute. And smart. And he's got the brand new NBC show on Friday nights. Sounds like us. He's housebroken. Sounds like me. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's Boomer. <laughs> we are glad you could make it, Boomer. Did you have trouble finding a parking place? Just wait a minute, wait a minute. Girls, you're talking to a dog. Boomer can do anything. Yeah. Anything? <clears throat> <laughs> Tell you what, though, let's make it a little harder for him, okay? Tell you what, Boomer, I've filled out this check here for hundred dollars. I want you to take it down to my bank, get it cash for me. Bring me back fifty in a cashier's check, and fifty in cash. <laughs> Got it? He says, "How do you want the 50? Oh, tell him tens will be just fine. <laughs> Go, boy. Well, I'll never see that money again. Hey. What do you mean? You just can't trust actors with money. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's been quite a while now, and there's no sign of Boomer or my hundred dollars. Oh, uh, here he comes! Holy Christmas! Here he is! <laughs> I don't believe this. The dog is back. Hi, Mama. Jay, we are going to go get ready for the concert. Yeah. Do your thing. <laughs> bye, Boomer. Bye, Boomer. I don't believe this, man. You're back. Well, let's see. Oh, you got the you got the cashier's check. That's good. And here's the money. 10, 20, 30, 40. Wait a minute. There's ten dollars missing, Boomer. What did you do with the other ten? Oh. Ah, very good. You got yourself a little bonus, huh? <laughs> some pretty weak dog humor. What do you say we go watch the girls in concert? Come on, Boomer, let's go. <laughs>